Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the seventh annual NKF Congressional Awards Reception. Although we are not able to meet in person this year, we are so pleased to bring this group together again to celebrate the true champions of our cause. I'd like to start by thanking our event committee for their hard work on planning the reception and their flexibility in pivoting to the virtual format. Thanks to our event co-chairs, Sam Marchio and Tanya Saffer, and committee members, Stephanie Kogan, Jody Lockhart, Art Pascarella, and Sharon Pierce. Next, it is my pleasure to recognize our corporate sponsors. Platinum sponsors, Anthem, Ardelex, Jody Lockhart, Mallinckrodt Pharmaceuticals, Merck, and Outset Medical. Gold sponsors, Blue Cross Blue Shield Association, Brownstein Hyatt Farber Shrek, CareDX, CVS Kidney Care, DeVita, Horizon Therapeutics, Humana, Peck Madigan Jones, Pharmaceutical Care Management Association, and U.S. Renal Care. Silver Sponsors, America's Health Insurance Plans, Karenic Construction, Equus Capital Partners, Greenstein, DeLorme & Lux, JLL, Kimball & Associates, Melman Castagnetti, Rosen & Thomas, NVG, Penn Quarter Partners, Tarplin Downs & Young, and Williams & Jensen. We are so grateful to all of our sponsors for their generous support. And our sincere thanks to our patient advocates who have joined us from across the country for today's summit and reception. These Voices for Kidney Health have been busy educating members of Congress and their staffs about our top legislative priorities. These include removing barriers to living donation, expanding access to home dialysis, and increasing support for kidney research and programs. When the pandemic struck last year, the National Kidney Foundation immediately went to work engaging with policymakers to raise the priorities of kidney patients. Here is one such patient. Hey, Hello. Davidson. Hello. How are you? Good. For seven-year-old Davidson Alagno, everything was going to plan. In September came bad news. His kidneys were failing. He needed a transplant. The next month, good news. His mother, Karen, was a match. When you found out your mom was going to be able to donate her kidney to you, how did you feel? Good. All the medication, all the hospital visits, blood work sessions were building to the transplant. But last week, Davidson's health declined. So doctors at Johns Hopkins scheduled his surgery for June. You know, we had this situation under control. We had a plan, we had options, um, and all we had to do was get to and through transplant. Mm -hmm. um, coronavirus, of course, changed all that. As Karen and her husband celebrated their 15th wedding anniversary, the phone rang. Davidson's transplant, which was deemed an elective surgery, had to be put on hold. It's news they haven't shared with their son. Our story is a nightmare, but it's not even the worst one you could find. The Alagno family is not alone in their plight. Doctors at hospitals across the country, including here at Children's National, have had to make that call to patients and parents that the surgery you need is just going to have to wait. I have a backlog of cases and to have to push them out, that's it's upsetting for families. Dr. Timothy Kane is chief of general and thoracic surgery at Children's National. He says hospitals and surgeons are in a tough spot having to care for patients and their families while trying to reduce the spread of the virus. While the wait can be agonizing, Karen isn't sitting idly by. She's sharing her story, encouraging people to stay home. Stopping the spread could put Davidson's transplant back on the calendar and put him at a lower risk of getting sick when he recovers. There are people like Davidson who need the health care system to work the way that it should. Like most kids, Davidson is hanging tough. Why don't you want to give up? After, it's going to feel better. It's going to feel better afterwards. And if mom can't get through to you, maybe a cute kid whose life depends on slowing the spread can. Back in March of 2020, the National Kidney Foundation requested that the Department of Health and Human Services clarify that organ transplants be considered essential procedures that can continue during the outbreak at a hospital's discretion. I'm very happy to report that Davidson received his transplant in July and is doing extremely well. In fact, in December, Davidson approached his parents about raising money to support other children who had to spend their holidays in the hospital. His fundraising goal was $500, but
but his campaign took off and he has now raised nearly $7,000. We can't wait to recognize little Davidson and his family at our virtual kidney ball on March 25th. And speaking of recognition, it's time to honor a patient advocate who has truly gone above and beyond this year. To introduce him, I will turn it over to Matt Hallisey. Hello, my name is Matthew Hallisey. I'm an attorney and lobbyist in my own firm in Glastonbury, Connecticut, and I'm volunteering my time to represent kidney patients in the National Kidney Foundation concerning its initiative to adopt the Living Donor Protection Act in Connecticut. Thank you to NKF for giving me this opportunity. My personal experience with chronic kidney disease was in watching my father suffer and ultimately die of polycystic kidney disease, PKD, about 18 months ago. As many of you know all too well, chronic kidney disease is horrible. It robs people of their energy, freedom, and dignity, not to mention their health. My father was too old and not eligible for a transplant, but in a way, he was fortunate. He persevered and lived until he was 93. Unlike many patients who are younger and suffer far more and die before their time or an organ becomes available, my father dedicated his end of life to supporting research by raising significant funds to help find a cure so others wouldn't have to suffer the same fate. Armin Halter reminds me of my father, who was selfless, dedicated, and didn't want to see others suffer. Each year, NKF presents the Richard K. Salek Advocacy Award to an Outstanding Kidney Patient Advocate. This prestigious award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of NKF's dear friend and former colleague, Rich Salek. Mr. Salek was a former professional surfer who underwent three kidney transplants and faced cancer, but continued to put the needs of other kidney patients ahead of his own. I have the distinct honor and privilege tonight to present the Richard K. Salek Advocacy Award to Armand Halter of Ledyard, Connecticut. Armand truly embodies the selfless and dedicated spirit of patients like my father and Rich, and he is the ideal person for the award. Armand is a kidney transplant recipient of 25 years, a patient advocate and peer mentor who assists patients with end-stage kidney disease transition from diagnosis to dialysis and ultimately transplantation. I've gotten to know Armand working alongside him as a volunteer and partner in our efforts to improve kidney disease policies in Connecticut. He is a thoughtful, kind, and generous man. Armand is dedicated to the cause of organ donation. I can call upon Armand day or night, and he gives freely of his time, patiently addressing my questions or helping develop and implement strategy in support of the bill. In meetings with lawmakers and state officials, Armand provides a compelling patient story to help advance the legislation and is a wonderful model and leader for other patient advocates motivating them to be active participants. With the support of the National Kidney Foundation and its group of advocates and volunteers in Connecticut and other states, including Armand Halter, we can help end this terrible disease. In the meantime, LDPA will help to protect those who give the gift of life. The bill, as you know, would help remove barriers to organ donation by ending discrimination by insurance companies against donors. If LDPA is to be adopted, it is because of amazing, dedicated people like Armand. So I hope you will join me tonight in recognizing Armand Halter for his selfless dedication, advocacy, and support. Like Richard Salek before him, Armand has put the needs of others before himself. On behalf of the National Kidney Foundation, I am proud to present Armand Halter with the 2021 Salek Advocacy Award. Congratulations, Armand. Thank you, Matt, for those kind words of introduction. I'm truly humbled and inspired by receiving this award. It's, but you cannot do it alone. Advocacy is a team approach. It's not a one person thing. When I first, I came to my first summit in 2019, then as now the Living Donor Protection Act was a major ask. That year, that year we were not successful in getting that legislation through the Congress. But I became motivated to see what I could do in Connecticut and pass our own Living Donor Protection Act. 
I involved Marsha Hildich from our local office together with Matt Hallisey, who is a, a lobbyist in the state of Connecticut who volunteered his time graciously. We move forward with the legislators to help draft a, uh, a bill. We were interrupted by uh, COVID, but we're once again in, uh, involved in the legislature to move this along. This year, we have no opposition. We have plenty of endorsements of the bill, and I think it will pass. I also want to thank the other advocates in Connecticut who were instrumental in moving this along with their representative or their state senator. They, they include uh, Robin Gilmartin, Diane Mack, and Sheila Sikowski, all standouts, truly. Once again, I am humbled by receiving this award and also inspired to imitate other uh, prior award winners like Kent Bressler, Jim Myers, and Jason Nordoff. I want to do more and I want to be successful doing it. Thank you again. Congratulations, Armand, and thank you for all you do. And now it is my honor to introduce the CEO of the National Kidney Foundation, Kevin Longino. Thank you, Michelle, and thank you to everyone here tonight, especially NCAF volunteers, board members, Hill staffers, and of course, our elected officials. It's hard to find the right words to speak to you tonight. It's been exactly a year since our nation was swept into the greatest crisis of our lifetimes. What we couldn't have known at the time was how severely the pandemic would affect people struggling with illnesses like kidney disease. The events of last year could have easily and understandably derailed so many of National Kidney Foundation's initiatives. Yet we came together during these trying times and still achieved so much. After years of efforts by NKF and our advocates, along with our champions on the Hill, Congress passed one of the most important bills to improve the lives of kidney patients, the Comprehensive Immunosuppressive Drug Coverage for Kidney Transplant Patients Act. It is now law. This landmark legislation ensures that patients on Medicare can afford indefinitely the life-saving medication they need following a transplant. I can't tell you how many stories I've heard from patients over the years who struggle financially after the 36-month limiting coverage of drugs expired. Because of this new law, taxpayer dollars will be saved and families of kidney patients will breathe easier knowing that there is now a safety net for their loved ones. This month is National Kidney Month. It's a time when we pause to think about the 37 million Americans in America walking around with kidney disease, and over 90% of them don't even know it. One out of every three adults are at risk for getting this deadly disease. These odds are just too high, which is why we are continuing the Are You the 33% campaign. And we continue our partnership with actor, activist, entrepreneur, and producer, Wilmer Valderrama. He's a dedicated advocate for kidney health and has joined our advocates in meeting with the congressional delegations to inspire action for kidney disease. Thank you, Wilmer, for all that you do and all you're doing to amplify our message. We're also honored to partner with award-winning actress Debbie Allen to spread the word about the important link between type 2 diabetes and kidney disease, especially reaching out to those at risk and underserved, disadvantaged populations. Good teams get things done. When I'm in a TV series like Fame or Grey's Anatomy or choreographing the Oscars or something, I'm part of a team. I'm Debbie Allen, and I'm proud to join you the NKF team in fighting kidney disease and improving people's lives. 33% of all adults in the United States are at risk for kidney disease and this affects me personally. My father, grandfather, aunts and uncles have all suffered from complications of type two diabetes, a leading risk for kidney disease. And despite the many years of dancing and being careful about my diet, I was recently diagnosed with prediabetes. It's more important than ever to know if you are at risk for or have kidney disease because it puts you at increased risk for life-threatening complications from COVID-19, especially if you're black or Hispanic. Kidney disease affects us all, which means we're all part of the NKF team. After playing a doctor on TV, it's a thrill to make a real life difference in the lives of kidney patients and those at risk, particularly those with type 2 diabetes who are at higher risk for kidney disease. 
NKF and their supporters are a winning team doing great work, and I'm proud to join you. Thank you all for what you do. Your work is really making a difference. Thank you, Debbie, for your important support. Tonight, I would like to single out for a special tribute the legislators who were able to come together in a bipartisan effort and change the lives of thousands of future kidney patients, Senator Bill Cassidy and Representative Donald Payne. These two men are the National Kidney Foundation's congressional honorees for 2021. And as the co-sponsors of the immunosuppressant drug bill, they worked relentlessly to get it into law. We also celebrate Congressman Ron Kine, Congressman Mike Burgess, and Senator Richard Durbin. We are grateful to these lawmakers for their longstanding dedication to kidney patients. Though this success is remarkable and culminates decades of work, we still have more to do. I ask each advocate, Hill staffer, lawmaker listening to stay committed until our next bill is enacted into law the Bipartisan Federal Living Donor Protection Act. This bill would end discrimination against those generous and selfless people who give the gift of life. We also thank Senators Kirsten Gillibrand and Tom Cotton and Representatives Jerry Nadler and Jamie Herrera-Butler for their leadership on this important legislation. It was recently reintroduced. In closing, I want to thank you all again for everything you do. COVID-19 took center stage last year and became the priority for much of our attentions but it did not reduce the urgency for kidney disease. In fact, it only increased it. Kidney patients need our help now more than ever. And on that note, it's time to present this evening's awards to two leaders who always answer the call. Senator Bill Cassie has been a longtime kidney champion and a key figure in the implementation of the previous administration's Advancing American Kidney Health Initiative. He co-led the Comprehensive Immunosuppressive Drug Coverage for Kidney Transplant Patients Act, and was instrumental in getting its passage through this last Congress. This important legislation will save and enhance thousands of lives. NCAP has been a leader for more than two decades in the effort to address this gap in coverage. And with Senator Cassidy's leadership, we were able to finally pass this important legislation last year. Thank you, Senator Cassidy. And congratulations on receiving the 2021 NCAP Congressional Award. U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy here. Let me start by saying I'm honored to receive the National Kidney Foundation Congressional Award. As you know, I received this for passing the comprehensive or helping to pass the comprehensive coverage for immunosuppressive drugs for kidney patients, uh, which is an accomplishment of the last Congress that will help many. Now let me, let me just say, you're thanking me, I thank you. I was in the House of Representatives eight to ten years ago when folks with your organization first approached about this bill. We would not have achieved this without the National Kidney Foundation advocates who worked tirelessly through the years to get the law passed. I'm a doc. I understand the importance of it. You were able to take this message of its importance not just to those with a healthcare background, but to many others. It was your advocacy that made this happen. I look forward to a partnership in which we continue to work together to promote kidney health and other types of health. I look forward to your assistance. It will be greatly appreciated by me, more importantly, by the patients. Thank you. Congressman Donald Payne has been a consistent supporter of kidney legislation and continues his advocacy at home as well. In addition to co-sponsoring many kidney bills throughout the years, including our Living Donor Protection Act, he's also participated in the 2019 Hamilton Township New Jersey Kidney Walk. Our patients, family members, and volunteers are very inspired by his attendance. Congressman Payne, as a kidney patient himself, always makes time for kidney causes and has been a staunch supporter of ours in Congress. It's a great honor to present Congressman Payne with the 2021 NCAF Congressional Award. Hello, I'm Donald Payne Jr., Congressman from New Jersey's 10th District. It is an honor to receive the National Kidney Foundation's 2021 Congressional Award. I want to thank the Foundation for this award. It has been a strong partner in our work to improve kidney-related health issues for America's nationwide. 
This award means more to me than most because I am one of the 37 million Americans with kidney disease. That is why I have supported bills in Congress to provide funding for kidney-related research and care. One example is the Minority Diabetes Initiative Act. It would provide grants to healthcare organizations that provide diabetes-related care to minority communities. Minorities face a much greater risk of being diagnosed with a kidney-related illness than their white counterparts. For example, African Americans are three times more likely to develop kidney failure, and they are twice as likely to die from diabetes. These health issues are so great that they affect the kidney donations. African Americans are less likely to donate a kidney because they fear future health issues. That is why African Americans who suffer from kidney disease are twice as likely to receive a kidney from a deceased donor than a live one. This can lead to other health issues that simply do not happen to patients who receive a kidney from a living donor. But all hope is not lost. The more we support organizations like the Kidney Foundation, the closer we get to finding a cure for kidney disease. Like many patients, I look forward to the day when I can walk out of dialysis treatment clinic for the last time. That will be the day I might be able to receive simple treatments at home instead of constant trips to the clinic. And thanks to the great work of the foundation, that day might come sooner than we think. So thank you again for this wonderful award and enjoy your event. And now it's time to hand the microphone back to Michelle. Thank you and please enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Kevin. As we bring this celebration to a close, we would like to encourage everyone to follow NKF's Advocacy in Action blog to get the latest news about kidney policy and to learn more about our advocacy activities. We invite you to join us for the virtual Kidney Ball on March 25th to hear more about Davidson and many other inspiring stories. Finally, we ask that you share your photos and stories on social media with the hashtag my kidneys, my life. Thanks again to our honorees, patient advocates, and corporate sponsors. It's been an unprecedented year, but with your support, a very productive one in the fight against kidney disease. Good night, everyone. <laughs>